To figure out number one, you have to look and see where the vertex is because all these answers are in vertex form. So the coordinates of that point are 3, 3 over, and 2 up. So in vertex form, the x sign will be flipped. So we're going to be looking for a negative 3 after the x, and that sign will stay the same. So we're looking for a plus 2 after the parentheses. That matches up with option C. One more thing I should point out. This is the correct answer not only because it's the only one with the correct numbers and signs, but see that negative sign out front? This parabola is upside down, so that is also why this one works. So be careful with that. Make sure if it's upside down it has a negative in front, and if it's right side up it has a positive number out front. We need the vertex of this, so it's going to be the opposite sign of that, negative 2, so positive 2, and it's going to be the same sign as that 1, so positive 1. So we're going to go 2 over, 1, 2, and 1 up, and put a dot for our vertex. Now we just have to figure out if this opens up or down, and then when we look in front of the parentheses, there's a positive 1 out there, so we know this opens up. And now we just need to say where that vertex moved in relation to the parent function, which normally starts at 0, 0. So instead of having the parabola start at 0, 0, we moved it to, so you can say, the vertex moved to the right 2 and up 1 unit. This problem is going to be worth 2 points on the quiz. So each of those letters will be worth a quarter point, so 0.25 for each of them. Uh, the first thing we have to do um, is I like to write down what A, B, and C equal. So A is 2, B is negative 4, and C is positive 5. Now I can use those and plug them into the formulas where I need them. Does it open up or down? Well, we just have to look at A. If A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. And we have a positive number, so this opens up. Next, for the axis of symmetry, we need to use the formula negative B over 2A. So I'm going to write down a negative sign. And now I'm going to plug in the number for B, which is negative 4. So it's negative negative 4. We'll divide it by 2 times the number for A, which is 2. And now we just simplify. So the negative negative on top became positive, And 2 times 2 on the bottom is 4. And 4 over 4 is 1. So the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. We're going to use that in the next step, because to find the vertex, it will be our x-coordinate, comma, whatever we get when we plug our 1 for x into the equation for x. So we're going to be figuring out f of 1. So I'm going to write the 2 and then plug in a 1 and square it. I'll write down minus 4 and then plug in a 1 and then add 5. If you type all of that in your calculator exactly the way you see it, it'll give you the answer. I'm going to quick do this in my head. 1 squared is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 4 times 1 is 4, so 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So our y value is 3 that we were looking for. So x is 1, y is 3. So those are the coordinates of the vertex. I'm going to go ahead and start sketching this stuff on the graph. So through x equals 1, so on the x-axis, and through the number 1, I'm going to draw my vertical dashed line. There's the axis of symmetry. We now know that the vertex is 1 over and up 3. We do know this parabola will open up, but before we start drawing it, we're going to fill in the y-intercept. The y-intercept is whatever the number for c is, which is 5. So it means the parabola crosses the y-axis at 5. 
I'm going to go ahead and make the mirror image of that point. Since it's one space away from the axis of symmetry to the left, I'll make another point one space away to the right. And now I can connect those dots. We're going to keep using that info for the rest of this problem. Do we have a maximum or minimum? Well, this dot right here is as low as it goes. It never goes any lower than 3. So I'm going to circle min for minimum. Where is it? It's at y equals 3. That's what we got for our y value in the vertex, and you can see that's as low as it goes. And now we'll fill out the domain and range. You do need to memorize these for the quiz. I will be okay if on the quiz you write the words all reals for the domain. What ideally you should do is write down an X and then that line that means such that and then write X is an element of the reals. So I will accept either of those. For the range, you need to write Y and then the line that means such that and now we say y, is it greater than and equal to or less than or equal to 3? Well, the entire parabola is above 3. So since it's above, we're going to use the greater than or equal to sign. So I'm going to put greater than or equal to, and what was our y value? 3. And that's it. So try to remember how to set those two up. If you're really worried, like I said, I will accept all reals if you would like to fill that in for the domain. So far for number four, I've written down A, B, and C. A is negative one, B is negative two, and C is positive three. Because A is negative, it opens down. I'm plugging B and A into the axis of symmetry formula. So I have a negative, negative two. So on top, that's going to be positive two. And on bottom, I have two times negative one, which is negative two. And two over negative two is negative one. On the review, I didn't give you fractions for that number. On the quiz, I will not give you a fraction for that number. I'm trying to make it easy on you. So now we know the x value. We have to plug it into the equation. So we're going to figure out f of negative 1. So everywhere I see an x in the equation, I'm going to plug in negative 1. So I have a negative sign. And now for x, there's my negative 1 and square it. I have a minus 2 times x and plus 3. So you can type that all in the calculator if you want to. Negative 1 squared will be positive 1. So it'll be negative 1. This is going to be positive 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So the coordinates of our vertex are the x value, negative 1 and then the y value, which is 4. So let's draw everything we have so far. The axis of symmetry is negative 1, so that's going to go right there. Our vertex is up 4. Our y-intercept is whatever c equals, and c equals 3. So I'm going to put a dot on 3 on the y-axis. I will make the point opposite that, that is symmetric. And I already said this thing's going to open down, so sure enough, connecting those dots means it opens down. So do we have a maximum or a minimum? Well, that vertex right there, that's the highest it ever goes, so it's a maximum. Where is it? It goes as high as y equals 4. I kind of drew over it. If you remember from the last problem, the domain is all reals, so the set of all x's such that x is an element of the reals, or you can write all reals. And for the y, we have y such that y is, and now see this parabola is all lower than 4? Lower means less than or equal to. So I'm going to use a less than or equal to 4 because that's what the y value was. The zeros of this are going to be where the parabola crosses the x-axis. You don't have to worry about factoring that because I gave you a picture. And it looks like it goes through 3 and 5. 
Now we need to factor or unbox. So the first step is to make sure your equation equals f of x, which is the same thing as having it equal zero. So it looks like we're good. Everything's on the one side of the equal sign. I'm so glad because the leading coefficient is one. That means we can take the factors of 20 and see which ones add up to 12. So let's list the factors of 20. One and 20. 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. So which ones add up to 12? 2 and 10. So I'm going to factor by writing two sets of parentheses with an x in each, and the 2 and the 10 both need to be positive. So plus 2 plus 10. And we have to actually find the zeros, which means we have to take those factors Set them each equal to zero, which is the step that you are allowed to skip if you would like, and solve them for x. So we will get x equals negative 2, and we will get x equals negative 10. How about I explain this first one by foiling, and the next one by boxing. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 10 times x is positive 10x, and 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. We can combine these like terms, and our final answer will be x squared, negative 5 plus 10 is positive 5, and then the minus 50. Here's the box method for this problem. You're welcome to do FOIL if you choose. So I have a 2 by 2. The factors go on the outside, so 4x and positive 5, x and negative 3. And I'm just going to start multiplying. 4x times x is 4x squared, this side and this side. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. I need to combine my like terms on the diagonal and write my final answer. First is 4x squared. 5 minus 12 is negative 7x. It'd work if I did it the other way too. If I did negative 12 plus 5, I'd get negative 7 as well. And then last, the minus 15. No real zeros cannot cross the x-axis. Remember not to make a parabola that looks like that because eventually it would cross the x-axis. So don't do that. You can draw a parabola opening up as long as it's above the x-axis or you could draw one opening down as long as it's below. You can do both. You don't have to. All we want to know in number 10 is where does this thing move because the vertex is not at 0, 0. It moves the opposite of that sign and since it's next to the x, and the x-axis is horizontal, that means we have a left-right move. Normally, we think plus 2 means to the right, but it's opposite world, and so this thing is moving 2 units left. So we can say the vertex moves 2 units left. And then once we're on the outside, this minus 4, we keep that sign. And since we already talked about the x, we have to talk about the y-axis. And a minus means we're going to be moving down as opposed to up. So it's 2 units left and 4 units down. What's the vertex of this thing? Well, it's in vertex form. We don't have to use that crazy formula, x equals negative b over 2a. We're going to flip that sign for the x value. We're going to keep that sign for the y value. So the vertex is positive 3, positive 4. Let's find these zeros by going through our checklist of factoring. I have f of x equals, and then all the numbers on the other side. So that's the same thing as 0. Everything's over there. I don't need to move anything around. I'm so happy because my leading coefficient, a, is 1, which means I simply need to take the factors of 3 and see which ones subtract to get positive 2. So the factors of 3 are 
1 and 3. So those are our only options. We need to place those in the parentheses so that when we subtract them, we get positive 2. Well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Nope. 3 minus 1? Yep. So the 3 will be positive, and the 1 will be negative. And we have to actually keep going and find the zeros. These are the factors. We can't stop here. We want the zeros, so we have to go one step further and set each of those factors equal to zero, which is a step you know you can skip and simply say the zeros are at negative three and positive one. Where are these zeros? Well, if you can read the graph and look at these numbers, you're able to get the answers right because it's x equals negative two and x equals positive four. I sort of have a little typo in number 14, so if you could go ahead and put a T next to the 256, that would be great, which changes the situation a little bit. Instead of dropping from a height of 256 feet, we are going to say that this fish is jumping from a lake, so it's going to come out of the water and then um, fall back into the water. So this is kind of a different problem set up that I, that I really wanted to ask you. So let's say we have a fish jumping out of the water and then returning to the water, and this is the function that models it. So just put a T after the 256, mm -hmm. and we will solve the problem as follows. We will take the H of T, which is like F of X. Um, it's the same thing as zero. Set it equal to the negative 16t squared plus 256t. So since we have a number in front of the t squared, we're going to divide everything by the GCF. Well, since we also have a negative in front, I know we need to get rid of the negative. And what's the biggest number that goes into 256? If I were you, I would try 16. And in this case, it works. You can divide 256 by 16, and we have a t squared and a t, so we also can divide by t. So I'll write that GCF out front, and I'll write the leftovers next to it. Negative 16 divided by negative 16 is 1. t squared divided by t is just t. 256 divided by negative 16 is negative 16, and the t's cancel out. So all of this equals zero. Our two factors, once we set them each equal to zero and solve, it doesn't matter, zero divided by negative 16 is going to be zero. We'll have zero for one of the answers. And t equals positive 16 for the other answer. So as you can see, this graph isn't quite long enough. That fish is going to be out of water for a real long time, so this wasn't really the best problem to think about in real life. But that's the shape the parabola would take. It's upside down because that is a negative sign, and it goes through 0 and 16. The key here is that you need to remember for the quiz, divide by that GCF. Divide by negative 16, um, and then keep factoring from there. So good luck on your quiz. I'll miss you next week, and we'll see you after break.